Hello students, this is Dr. Anita Raj, your chemistry mentor, welcoming you for a new session in coordination chemistry. So first let us know what is coordination compound. The coordination compounds are those in which a central metal atom or ion is permanently attached to a certain atom or a group of atoms called ligands. See here, this is a coordination compound in which the central metal atom is linked to a group of atoms, either one atom or a group of atoms, okay? And this group of atoms are called as ligands. And the ligands are capable of donating a pair of electrons to the central atom or ion and gets attached to it by coordinated coordinate bonds. See this, ligands are attached to this central atom by coordinate bonds, okay? So this is called as a coordination compound, okay? So what are the important terms we are going to see today? See, coordination entity, coordination sphere and ionic sphere, central metal atom, ligands, coordination polyhedron, coordination number, counter ion and oxidation number. So out of this, see these two names you might have learned earlier, central metal atom and oxidation number, these two are uh, known uh, uh, terms, but other things are uh, new to you, okay? So let us see one by one now. Coordination entity, see coordination entity, it is nothing but it is an ion or neutral molecule. Okay, which has a central metal atom and ligands. Okay, and it is enclosed in square brackets. So it may be this coordination entity may be an ion or a neutral molecule, and it will be having a central metal atom. And to the to the central metal atom, ligands will be attached, and that coordination entity will be enclosed in square bracket. So as I told you earlier, this is a coordination compound. Okay, so in this which is the coordination entity. So, this let me write the coordination entity. So, now, see, let me write, see, when you are breaking this, if you break this, this becomes 4K plus, okay, 4K plus, and it splits up. And now, again, this is the uh, next one, next part of the uh, complex, okay. So, always in a complex, the first half will be a positive entity, and the next half will be the negative quantity. Okay. So, here we have this is converted, this is uh, shown as a, a positive that is a fat ion and this will be a negative ion. Okay. So, Fe, Cn6. Okay. And now we close the bracket, the square bracket and what is the charge? It should be minus 4. Okay. So, this is the, uh, uh, what is the coordination entity. Okay. So, the coordination, as I told you earlier, the coordination entity, it will be either an ion or a neutral molecule. So, here it is an ion. Okay. And it will be having a central metal atom and the ligands. And it is expressed and it is enclosed in a square bracket. Understood? So, this is a, uh, a coordination entity. So, now I've given another example. And I, as I told you earlier, see when you are splitting this, the first half will be a positive quantity and next half will be a negative quantity. See, as we all know that chlorine always has the charge a minus, is it not? It's minus. So, here we are having three chloride ions. Okay. So, now what is the charge for this CO cobalt NH3 six times? Okay. Close the bracket and here we will be having three plus. Okay. So, this will be a positive this part will be positive and this is negative. The first half will be positive as I told you earlier. So, the coordination entity is this. Understood students. Next one is coordination sphere and ionic sphere. See, this coordination sphere is same as that of the coordination entity. Coordination entity is otherwise called as coordination sphere, okay? But what is ionic sphere? See, it's different, okay? See, let us see what is coordination sphere. The part consisting of the central metal atom and ligands directly attached to it mean the ligands are directly attached to the central metal atom. They are enclosed in a square bracket and is called as the coordination sphere. It's nothing but coordination entity. Okay. And what's ionic sphere then? See the part written outside the square bracket is called as ionic sphere. So see here this is the complex compound and if you are just uh, when you are splitting here the matter which is written inside the square bracket will be the coordination sphere. See here, see this is undergoing ionization, okay. So, this is the coordination sphere and the ionizable part that is SO4 2 minus is the ionic sphere. Understood, so the part written outside the square bracket is called as the ionic sphere, right. So, might have understood what is coordination sphere and ionic sphere. This coordination sphere and coordination entity are almost the same. 
Next, we shall see what is central metal atom. Okay. See, these are the atoms or ions to which certain atoms or group of atoms are permanently attached by coordinate bonds. See, these are the atoms or ions. Okay. See, this is the coordination compound. Okay. See, here this is the uh, central metal atom. So, it is an atom or an ion into which some atoms or group of atoms are permanently attached by coordinate bonds. Okay. So, this is the uh, central metal atom. See, the central metal atom should be always represented by charge. Okay. See, now, see, let me, let me uh, split this now. So, when you are splitting this, this becomes, right. So, here, this AG, okay, this always, the central metal atom will be represented by a charge. See, here, this, how to calculate this charge, that we will see when we are, when I am explaining the oxidation number, so that you can understand easily, right, okay. So, normally, the central metal atom will be represented by a charge, okay. See, here, any metal atom or ion which can accept electrons given by the ligands, can act as a central metal atom or ion. Understood? See, this metal atom can accept the electrons furnished by this ligands. So, those metal atoms or ions which can accept the electrons furnished by the ligands are called as the central metal atom. Okay? Uh, and this can involve in complex formation also. So, the complexes are usually formed by the transition metal atoms or ions because they possess sufficient vacant d orbitals. See, this type of the central metal atoms Normally, the transition metal atoms should be acting as a central metal atom and they can form the complexes easily. The reason is they will be possessing uh, vacant d orbitals so that they can accommodate the electrons furnished by this ligands. Understood, student? So, here I have given another compound. See, this is a neutral compound because CO, okay, this carbonyl is a neutral compound. So, there will be no charge on the central metal atom. So, which is the central metal atom here? Nickel. So, nickel will not be having any charge since because it is a neutral complex. Understood, students? So, we shall see the next one that is the counter ion. So, these are the ionizable groups written outside the brackets. So, I have given another name also for that. Is it not? What is the name? That is ionic sphere. So, here the uh, substance which is uh, the group which is written outside the square bracket. Okay. Outside the square bracket is K. Okay. So, K plus. Okay, 4K plus. So, these are the counter ions. Understood, students. So, now you might have understood what the important thing we are going to see. This is a ligand. Okay, what are ligands? See, ligands are ions or molecules which are directly attached to the central metal atom or ion are called ligands. Okay, see, these are the ions which are directly attached to the central metal atom in a complex. Okay, see, normally the atom, see, in ligands, there will be number of, sometimes it may be a sim, uh, uh, or to say a single um, element or an atom or it may be a group of atoms okay so the atom that is directly bound to the central metal atom is called as a donor atom see uh, if suppose see i have given some examples here there are different types of ligands unidentate ligands didentate ligands polydentate ligands and chelated ligands okay so we shall see i'll give example what is a donor atom now See here, it's a unidentate. Unidentate ligand means, see, uh, the ligand bound to a metal ion through a single donor atom. See here, this is chlorine. So, this chlorine is directly, will be directly attached to the central metal atom. So, it is a unidentate ligand. And here, so as I told you earlier, this ligands can be either an atom or an ion or a molecule, is it not? See here, this is a molecule, water molecule. But, uh, but this water molecule is considered as a unidentate ligand. Because this ligand uh, will be bound to the metal atom, central metal atom through a single donor atom, okay. See here in water, which uh, atom acts as the uh, donor, see this oxygen will be acting as the donor. Since this oxygen alone is giving the electrons to the central atom, this is considered to be, uh, this water molecule is considered as a unidentate ligand, okay. Now next comes the amine, okay. This is nothing but this is amine. Okay, amine. See here, this amine, it's having nitrogen as well as hydrogen. But here, this nitrogen will be the donor atom. This will be giving electrons to the central metal atom. Since this alone is giving the electrons, this is considered to be the donor atom and it is, comes under unidentate ligand. And next comes the cyanido. C-Y-A-N-I-D-O, cyanido. Okay, here both we, we can see this uh, in some compounds, this C will be uh, donating 
electrons in some compounds na n nitrogen will be donating electrons so any one will be giving electrons okay so that is coming under the unidentate ligand okay next comes the didentate ligand here the oxaliato is taken as the example so how to write this oxaliato see here are uh, this um, c single bond c double bond o double bond o single bond o minus okay yes o minus see here this both this oxygen atoms both this oxygen atoms acts as donor atoms okay both these oxygen atoms are connected to the central metal ion metal ion or metal atom to coordinate bonds since two connections are there it comes under didentate ligand both these oxygen atoms will be uh, donating electrons okay and this is another example ethylene diamine see here we are having uh, two nitrogen groups two nitrogen groups or no two nitrogen atoms are having lone pair of electrons both this uh, nitrogen will be donating lone pair of electrons to the central metal atom okay so we will be having two coordinate bonds understood so this comes under didentate ligand okay and the next one is polydentate ligand polydentate ligand means this ligand will be bound to the central metal ion through several donor atoms see here uh, this, this oxygen will be a donor this oxygen will be a donor this nitrogen will be a donor this nitrogen will be a donor this oxygen again this oxygen so several uh, metal uh, several um, donor atoms are here and these from all these will be having some coordinate bond with the central metal atom okay so that's why it's coming under polydentate ligand next comes the chelate ligand what is the chelate ligand see it's a didentate or a polydentate ligand which forms two or more coordinate bonds with the central metal atom in such a way that five or six membered ring is formed okay see here this is this is a chelate ligand and this will be forming this is this comes under didentate because uh, it, this is ethylene diamine okay ch2 nh2 nh2 ch2 ch2 nh2 nh2 ch2 so ethylene diamine okay but uh, this is a uh, didentate ligand but this comes this uh, uh, will be uh, forming two or more coordinate bonds with the central metal atom understood that's why it's coming under chelate ligand and because of this this will be forming a five or six membered ring okay so that's why it's called as axis next important term is coordination number so what is coordination number it's a number of ligand donor atoms bonded to a central metal ion in a complex or a number of sigma bonds between the ligand and the central atom See, it's the number of ligand donor atoms okay it's not written as number of ligands attached to the central atom okay see but but we, it is possible to find out the coordination number by just counting the number of ligands attached to the central atom okay but that is possible only for monodentate ligands what what if we mean monodentate ligands see here there will be only one attachment okay only one coordinate bonds will be there that is uh, monodentate ligand so uh, but uh, so it's not possible for other type of didentate or polydentate ligands to find out the coordination number by just counting the number of ligands so it's correct only if we count the number of ligand donor atoms bonded to the central metal ion okay so that by this that is called as coordination number see here this is a, a coordination entity i have given so how many this is cl6 cl6 is the ligand okay so counting count the number of uh, uh, what what to say number of uh, chlorine six chlorine is it not so what is the coordination number for this one it is six okay six is the coordination number understood see here what's the next compound see here and nh3 four times see here also there are four is it not four ligands so here nitrogen alone will be the donor so this uh, this comes under Uh, monodentate okay so this will be an example okay the coordination number for this because four ligands are attached to the um, central metal atom but see here this is nh2 ch2 ch2 nh2 cc is ethylene diamine okay ethylene diamine in this case if both the nitrogen atoms are having the lone pair of electrons and both these nitrogen atoms will be donating electrons to the central atom so there will be two connections so two donor atoms are there okay so what what could be the coordination number here what is the coordination number here it's two okay understood it's two polyhedron see po coordination polyhedron is nothing but it's a 3d spatial arrangements of ligands directly connected to the central metal atom 
see here the ligands are directly connected to the central metal atom and there will be and this will be arranged in a, a 3d pattern understood see here we are having four uh, ligands okay since four attachments are there so we it, the, the structure of this will be tetrahedral okay tetrahedral Okay. So this is uh, this is this will be the shape. Okay. Next you see here uh, K4, Fe, Cn6, six uh, cyanide groups are there. Okay. Six cyanide groups are there. That is six ligands are there attached. So six uh, attachments. So that its uh, structure will be octahedral. Understood? Octahedral. So this is this is called coordination polyhedron. Okay. The next very important one is oxidation number. As I told you earlier, I will be teaching at the end. See, the oxidation number is very important because the charge, if this only if you calculate the oxidation number, it is possible to give the charge on the central metal atom. Okay, so it's nothing but it's the charge on the metal atom. If all the ligands with the electron pairs are shared to the central metal atoms are removed. So, if all the ligands are removed with a shared pair of electrons and the left out will be the central metal atom with its charge, that charge is the oxidation number. So, we shall see how to calculate the oxidation number. See, this is the formula for calculating the oxidation number of a, a central metal atom. Okay. So, how to calculate? See, net charge always the coordination entity will be having a net charge. Okay. That charge will be equal to the oxidation state of the central metal atom minus number of ligands into charge on the ligand. So, this is the formula. So, based on this, we are going to calculate the oxidation number for this central metal atom in these two complexes. Okay. So, let us see how to calculate. First, we should, we should uh, let us divide this. So, that this becomes 4k plus only if you are dividing, it's possible to write the, the charge on the coordination entity. So, Fe Cn 6 at the top we will be having this right. So, we do not know the oxidation number of this one. Uh, we, are, we are in charge on the central metal atom we are in need of. Okay. So, we can have this as X. We do not know. So, now what is the what is the charge on this Cn minus 1? So, charge on the ligand into number of ligands. So, number of ligand is a 6 is it not? Number of ligand is 6. Charge on the ion is uh, minus 1. So, minus 1 into 6, it is uh, minus 6, okay. Minus 6 is equal to, what's the net charge? Minus 4. So, x is equal to minus 4 plus 6. That's equal to plus 2. So, x is equal to plus 2. So, what's the, what's the charge of this uh, um, central metal atom? It is plus 2. So, the oxidation state is plus 2. So, always this uh, oxidation number is represented by a Roman letter, okay. Which will, which, will, which will be written in parenthesis. Okay, it will be written in parenthesis. Now, we are going to find out the oxidation number of this IFE in this complex. Okay, and first we shall split this. So, this becomes 2K plus and then uh, what is the entity? FE CN thrice Cl2 NH3. Okay, close the bracket. So, the charge on the entity net charge will be uh, 2 minus is it not it's 2 minus here it's plus okay first half is plus so it is 2 minus okay now we are supposed to calculate the uh, charge on the central metal atom so we can have this as x x now now what's the charge of cn it is minus 1 how many how many uh, ions are there so uh, how many see how ligands are there 3 is not so 3 into minus 1 it's minus 3 minus 3 then how many chlorine chlorine we have two chlorines is it not what's the charge of chlorine minus 1 so number of ligands into charge and so minus 1 into 2 that is minus 2 okay minus 2 what is the uh, see this is a neutral ligand ns3 is a neutral ligand so it is 0 okay so minus 0 is equal to what's the net charge it is minus 2 okay so minus 2 now ax minus 5 is equal to minus 2. So, x is equal to minus 2 plus 5 is equal to plus 3. So, what is the uh, charge of this central metal atom? It is plus 3. So, how will you write? 
EFE, what is Roman name? It should be written in Roman letter, is it not? It should be written in parenthesis. Understood, students? Fine, students, you might have understood the important terms involved in coordination chemistry. So, let me meet you with another important topic in the next session. Until then, it's Dr. Anitara signing off from you. Thanks for watching.